Sorry, baby, show me. What is up, guys? Welcome back to another video. We're back in the office again. Like I said last Friday, um, I pretty much am filming a bunch of videos in advance so I can take a week off to enjoy my time in Florida with my family. I don't want to do like these half butt vlogs I did last year um, from our, my family Florida trip. You know, the Florida trips with Hayden are always fun to vlog because you never know what's going to happen. Hayden's always just really goofy and fun to be around, so this, he always finds a way to make those vlogs funny. Um, my family vlogs, though, we don't really do a whole lot. We usually stay in the condo, go to the beach, and that's pretty much it. Um, so, I mean, we do a lot more, well, we do a lot of, like, sightseeing and stuff from time to time, but, you know, I feel like it'd be hard to vlog, so, uh, I decided not to this year, uh, for the family trip, and to just enjoy my time, you know, spending time with my family and just relaxing. So, I'm filming a lot of videos in advance, and today's video is on the 2020 Ford, or the, not the 2020, but the new Ford Bronco. Uh, is it gonna be flopper success? So I've done a couple videos like this already on the GT500, the Explorer ST, and the C8 Corvette. And you've probably already seen yourself, Jordan, why do you keep doing American cars? What the Japanese cars? The only car I wanted to do was the Supra, which is too far in production uh, too far in production now to do that video on because we already know everything. And the only things I'll really be able to say is to make more power, put a stick shift in it. Uh, and, you know, finish the car because it left a lot of stuff to the aftermarket. So, um, I mean, that's literally all I can say with the Supra. Uh, I like. I really do like the Mark V. In all honesty, though. So, uh, anyway, guys. So this video's gonna be on the Bronco, and there's a whole lot of speculation on the Bronco. There's a lot of people saying it's gonna get the four-cylinder. A lot of people's gonna say it's gonna be based off the F-150 chassis. Um, some people are saying it's gonna be. Uh, it's gonna have a seven-speed manual option, the ten-speed auto. There's a whole a two-door and four-door version. I mean, there's a whole lot of. Um, of, of just speculation behind the Bronco. Lots of pictures, supposed pictures of the concept, supposed pictures of the prototypes, the test mules. I mean, there's so many different, you know, um, like speculation, so much speculation behind the Bronco. So I'm gonna give some situations where it'd be a flop and some situation where it'd be a success. So let's get started. So flop, they base it off a mid-sized chassis. This seems to be the trend with the SUVs right now that are meant to be off-road. The Wrangler, is not as big as it used to be. Well, not as big by terms of motor size, but it's about the same dimensions. But it's not a big car. It's a very mid-sized kind of vehicle, uh, except for the Gladiator. That thing's massive. I've seen one in person, and I could not believe how big they actually are. Um, and the, you know, that's not necessarily a bad thing. You know, a short, a short, um, a short wheelbase helps a lot whenever you're off-roading. So having a car that's about the size of a Wrangler really does help out but the problem with the Bronco is is the Bronco is known as a full-size vehicle its heritage has always been a full-size uh, SUV so something along the lines of an F-150 based chassis so I feel like switching it up and giving the truck a different name or giving the truck the same name but making it a mid-size would be kind of like a slap in the face of the legacy of the vehicle and I do feel like that it would be better for them to just create it on a full-size chassis and use the F-150 as a base, much like the old ones were. Um, and yeah, that's really all I can say about that. The mid-size chassis thing, while it would be better, somewhat better for off-roading, as it would give, you know, better angles for departure and all that stuff. Um, I don't know a whole lot about off-roading, so I'm not gonna talk like I know everything, but uh, at least based off the episode Top Gear I watched, you know, apparently short wheel base is really good for uh, uh, the, the angles to climb. So, um, while it wouldn't be the worst, I do feel like it would it would make it kind of less successful than it would be is because it wouldn't be based off the F-150 like its previous incarnations were. So my second one is they do put the 2.3 in it. So the rumor of the 2.3, while it wouldn't be too out of place, especially with the Ranger getting it now, um, I do feel like that it would be out of place on the Bronco because the Bronco, again, is full-size issue based. It's a full truck. thought I heard something going outside. But the Bronco is based on a full-size truck. So putting the 2.3 in it, if they did decide to stick to the heritage of the full-size SUV, uh, well, we have seen how the 2.7 has gone in the Silverado. It hasn't gone very well. So uh, I feel like it'd be the same way. The 2.3 in that in that big full-size chassis would be just like the 2.7 Silverado. It would be kind of just, you know. So I feel like putting the 2.3 in there would be a bad decision. I feel like. If they're gonna do a full-size frame, it needs to have the F-150's engine choices: the 2.7, the 3.0, the 5.0, and, and etc. Um, and even you know, it'd be cool to get the new 7.3 pushrod motor in there as an option. I mean, that'd be kind of cool, for like a Raptor version of the Bronco. 
Um, so my third flop would be the if they redid the styling off the F-150. So here's the thing: the rumors are that's gonna be based on some rumors say it's gonna be based on the Ford Everest, which I, I don't necessarily know what it looks like. So I'll put a picture on screen. Uh, hopefully, I remember this time. Um, and while that's fine, I mean, it would be a mid-sized SUV, and it wouldn't really be meant for off-roading if they just took an Everest to put a Bronco badge on it. Um, if they did an F-150-based vehicle, I would feel like that it would be only right to keep the front end of the F-150 on it. And while some people don't like the new front end of the F-150, I'm torn on it. It's, it's an F-150. It's, it's not really a car that I would define as a showstopper. Um... I feel like it would be wrong of them to change the styling up a lot. Yeah, the Broncos had some minor differences from the F-150s back in the day, but the thing is, is that it would just be awkward to see a F-150 based vehicle that didn't even look like the F-150. It is, it's like, um, it's like the Expedition was from 2011, um, when they redid the body on the Ex Expedition, which I believe was on its own chassis at the time, I don't even think it was using the F-150 as a base anymore, like the, old, like the older ones were. Um, but it didn't look like an F-150, and, that, and honestly, I, don't, I haven't seen too many of them in real life, so I don't know how well they actually sold. I don't know if they sold better than the old ones did. Um, but you know, that's kind of what I'm going at here. Is I don't, I, I feel like if they restyled the Bronco too much from the F-150, it would kind of take out again the heritage of the Bronco being pretty much an F-150 with a short bed and a can, a canopy on the back with some seats. So, what would make it a success? Like I said, giving it the F-150's engine choices. If you give it the 2.7 V6 with a twin turbo, the 3.0 twin turbo V6, the Coyote 5.0, you know, even getting options for like the power, the mini, the little, the little power stroke they're putting in the F-150s now, and of course that 7.3 Godzilla motor, uh, it would do a lot to help the Bronco's case, especially if it's competing against the uh, the Wrangler, because the Wrangler doesn't even have a V8 option anymore. It would be nice to have the Bronco be able to take its place as kind of the superior off-roader to the Wrangler. Well, yeah, it's probably not going to outsell the Wrangler. It's still going to be a good car for that price range, for that, for that, for that, um, condi for that um, discipline. If you're going to be doing a full-size V8 uh, Bronco again. So the next one, this, you guys probably kind of saw this coming. Put the manual in it. So the rumor of the seven-speed manual would be very interesting in a car that big because the only other cars to have a seven-speed manual are the 911 and the Corvette. So it would be cool to see that in an SUV, and I'd love to see it in the Mustang because I feel like ew, it's better than the MT82, and I don't know why they never put the TR6070 in the Mustang because I, I'm surprised Ford hasn't realized right now the MT82 is hot garbage. I mean, I, I've had, like, Hayden's driven several MC82 cars, and he said they all, but one of them sucked. And even the one that he did, they, you know, that he did kind of like wasn't even that great. So, I feel like if they put a 7 speed in it, based off the TR6070, that'd be perfect. If they do their own MT82 kind of, uh, you know, kind of junk again, if they make another MT82 but with a 7th gear on it, I feel like that would be a mistake. Um, but I, I'm vying more for the TR6070. Um, as the optional 7-speed manual rumor and the 10-speed would still be a good choice and don't get me wrong If you guys really you know for trucks and SUVs, I understand they need for autos So for sports cars not so much, but for for SUVs. Yeah, it kind of needs an auto uh, You can't really have fun manually shifting an SUV. I mean some people find a way to do it It's I mean, it's probably still better than the old autos where they didn't even have manual shift, but um, Anyway, that's beside the point uh, I feel like the Bronco would be successful with that manual option because, I don't know, I feel like it would give it the edge. Uh, yeah, the Wrangler has the manual option too, but it would be cool to have a full-size SUV with a manual, especially in like a 3.0 on the 3.0 twin turbo, because I really don't believe we ever had the 3.5 twin turbo with a stick shift option, so I may be wrong. I can't tell you that for, for certain, but I do believe there was never a 3.5 twin turbo car or a twin turbo EcoBoost vehicle with the manual. So you kind of go to get to finally get that EcoBoost with a stick. And the last one I can come up with is to just do it right, play to its heritage. A lot of cars tend to forget their heritage. I mean, we've seen even some complaints about the new Supra that it is not the same car it was before. The new Supra is based on a sports car chassis like of the Z4. It's not a grand touring car like the like the Mark IV was. The Mark IV was a lot bigger and was more meant to be a grand tour than it was a sports car. It still did the job of a sports car very well. Um, and I mean, again, the 2J is just immaculate, but the Mark V is meant to be a full Ford, like full force sports car. So that makes sense to me 
why Toyota did that route and why a lot of people, I, I get it, some people are like, well, it's not like the Mark IV, and it's because it wasn't meant to be like the Mark IV, it was meant to be a more sporty car. Um, and the Mark IV was a Grand Tour, it was originally designed as a Grand Tour. But anyway, that's beside the point. I feel like if the Bronco does this mid-size Everest-based SUV, that it would be the biggest mistake they could make with the Bronco. Because if they're doing that, then what about the, you know, the heritage of the big blocky SUV kind of deal with, you know, pretty good off-road credentials that fought the Wrangler. So I feel like if they did the Everest-based vehicle, that it would not live up to its heritage and it would probably not be that great off-road to be honest. I feel like the Wrangler would still be superior to it if they did that way. If they want any chance to compete with the Wrangler, they need to stay true to its heritage. So I feel like it would be a success if they stay true to its heritage. So with all that said guys, hope you guys enjoyed this video on the new Bronco. Um, like I said, there's a lot of speculation, which made it pretty easy to make this video because there's so many things I can play off of, like the 2.3, the mid-size, the full-size, the V8. Um, there was just so many things I could play off of with making a flopper success video on the Bronco. So if you guys have any other ideas for cars you guys want me to do a flopper success video on, leave them down in the comments below. Um, I'll be sure to take any ideas you have. Um, we're closing in on the reveal of the C8, which would be, which is going to be fantastic. I can't wait to see the car finally. It's been a long time since they announced it. I want to see this thing in person, see what the successor to what a great car the C7 was. Um, I want to do more imports though for this video, so if you guys have any more like import cars I can look up and read on um, and do a flop or success video on, let me know. Like I guess the Supra is out of contention now because it's just, it's too new, it's too close to production. So, um, with that said, hope you guys enjoyed, I'll see you guys next time.